Good times day, all creatures of wild chain ratings, and welcome to Kingdom of Aldana, where you should update your DM's processing processing ability because his loading screens are taking too them long. Two weeks. It's been taking two weeks. Anyway, previously uh, the Hero Sterans or the surviving Hero Sterans have escaped from uh, the eye of the storm, uh, though getting slightly mis not misplaced, but held back by the attacking ice wolves you have requested evacuation and are whisked away by lady kazar back to neba where you summon help from uh, the kirin and his rider mr shine for assistance with resurrections and nachnaya for assistance with religious advice ladies and Laura have encountered consequences of dying in a post Said Nevek world, but both were resurrected with seemingly no side effects. Seemingly. Meanwhile, the party had a conversation with Lady Kazar uh, upon your further actions with her advising you to finish your business on Prime Material before heading on to the Dragon World, since after your return, it is possible the world will be taken over by mass of dragons, and any transportation will be complicated. So, as uh, you, uh, Leos, uh, are brought back to life and throw a cool one-liner towards the party, you are greeted back, given a couple of hugs, even Pidgeric comes over and shakes her head, and and uh, says, <laughs> "It is good that you have returned. The others are bad conversationalists." Um, Te technically, I'm not attuned to the flute at the moment, right? Uh, so I don't understand him. Yeah, says, technically you aren't. Yeah, so PG oh. goes over, says, "Hamana, hamana, hamana." Hamana, 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 hamana. Yeah. I hand him the flute because I have all his stuff, I guess. Yeah, right. Do, do you know these wristbands, the, the, the reflective wristbands that you can slap on and yeah. they <laughs> call around? I'll do that with my flute uh -huh. on my neck. Yeah, I give you all your stuff back. Into, thank you. Oh. Huh? Um. I assume you put your stuff on so that you become presentable. Uh, yeah. What do you guys want to do? Yeah, uh, we tried to bring you back, but uh, the angel guy said that you were unwilling and unable. And then he came back. Yeah, lies. What happened? No, nothing much. I'm here now. Envelops in shadows. <laughs> oh, more than usual. Did you kill the Raven Queen? Yeah. Ooh. Well done. Well, she did, didn't want to let me go, so... I had to break that bitch's neck. I'm kidding. Well, that would've been cool. It would have been, well, no. Then Sight of Act would become a thing. Even more than it already is. No, no, no. We just had a prolonged conversation. Yeah, as it turns out, uh, unfortunately, the two of you died for uh, very little. Mm. The four of us got the word in. Uh, while you were gone by simply challenging and defeating the beast in combat, which seemed a lot easier, really. Hindsight. And a lot quicker. Well, okay. see where things get us when we try diplomacy, right? Uh, yeah. Never again. That's what I'd like to say today. Yeah, so that's kind of all lesson. the metallic dragons, right? That's not... Yeah. That sounds like the way to go. It's just challenge them to a fight until they give you the word. Yeah, PG is standing next to you, smiling quietly because he doesn't understand. 
Uh, he smiles um, because he doesn't been, understand. Yes. We've been told that bringing back people uh, not through the ceremony uh, is awful or not good because then they don't have a purpose, right? Or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and you seem different. And the magic that we tried failed, but you're still here. Does that mean, like, did we, did we bring you back not as we should have? I'm actually an imposter. I'm saying Nevek trying to fuck with me. Is that another joke? Are I don't know. That seems like a joke. Tell if he was. He wouldn't be able to tell if he was. So. No, I'm still the same. Nothing changed. Well, the only thing that's changing about our current situation anytime soon is uh, whenever Lady Khazar um, finishes the key in either case, right? Until oh, yeah, then... Watch out from her punches. What? She might uh, kill you again, Dios. <laughs> oh. Let's just one more time. As you look around, you see that uh, Lady Kazar stands away, uh, kind of like watching as your party is still manhandling you and noticing your attention. She kind of nods to you and makes a motion of like, when you're done, come talk to me, with me. I, I nod. Are we done here? I mean, yeah. We are just gonna be doing some draconic today, I think, so... Oh, Melora. Did you mm -hmm. have a talk with the Raven Queen as well? Yeah. She more or less told me to... Excuse the language, get my ass in gear. Did she give you any advice? I see, I see we had similar talks with her. <laughs> Pretty much. Oh. And no, no, um, I'm sorry, the player drew a blank, not the character, Zardos. Um, no, she didn't give me any hints. Hmm. Well, I think she'd be a little more help than this. To be fair, I was more concerned about trying to get back and, um, trying to say that um, whatever it was that I did in my past life, I never really had any intention for it, but um, yeah, the, she was a little more intimidating this go-around. I wanted to get away. How do you... Oh, never mind. Um, yeah, I think it might be a good idea that we finish up our businesses get as much power as we can get. What else do we have on our list? Your brother needs to die. Well, you, that you might need, be a good idea. You need to kill him. Okay. Alright, but don't turn evil, okay? <laughs> don't be depressed, man! Man, it's just finishing off the rest of my family. It's no big deal. I mean, I mean, I mean, I would, I would do it for you, but I don't think that's how your thing works. But I can hold him down if you want. Yeah, always helpful. I can. You can also like cover your eyes, and I will guide your hand while you stab him. Then you can tell yourself that it was me forcing you to kill your brother, if that makes it easier. Yeah, if you don't feel comfortable, I can take control and kill him in your stead, if you'd like. Yeah. Control hey. of you, I mean, you know. All my responsibility. You're completely innocent. You I'll keep that in mind. Humor, you too. Well, you gotta make fun of something. Yeah, well, I was no, making I... fun. I was I actually being serious. Myself. Oh, that's the difference, I guess. I don't know how he feels about killing his brother. Uh, I was merely offering him options that he can relieve himself of responsibility. 
think he yeah. actually. Yeah. If you give him that option, then it ceases being an option, you know, that's the issue. Because then if he chooses it, it's still his responsibility. If you just do it, then why well, you had no choice. Yeah, no. That's true. Yeah, I will say, the, the only oh. sibling I had that I cared about is already dead, so... Is she dead? Fuck. Yeah. yeah. So, so... You wanna try wait. and bring her back? Still at one time? <laughs> I don't think she's coming back. Remember who she swore fealty to in the end? Yeah, no, something that's keeping my eyes. It all runs down to say Nidavik, so I don't think that he would be willing to depart with her soul. So we make... Can... Right. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, yeah, but you're I... right. I don't think she's gonna be coming back on the or and say Nivek is gonna let many people go. So, are we making a day trip? You know, day trip down to the yeah Never Winter Way. Well, how about you arrange a meeting with your brother? Um, we'll go there, fuck him up, and then we'll figure out Melora shit. I mean, should I announce our arrival or just go? I, I mean, didn't he challenge you already? Like, maybe just confirm it and tell him, hey, do, let's do this one on one and then we just waste it. 5 p.m. behind the garages. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're doing the novel version though, where it's uh, 6 p.m. in the courtyard. Behind the griff uh, Griffin garages. Oh, or the... Oh. Yeah. Behind the stables. Behind the Griffin stables, yeah. yeah that's how you call them in medieval times, yeah. <laughs> yeah stables. <laughs> oh, okay, so... Uh, how are we going? Oh. Plans? Um, question: Do you have a thing, Arliss? Do you like need to become like a phoenix or something? Because he's mutating. I pointed Zar uh, Zardas. He already became became Mr. Shine 2.0. Pointed Trego. No. She needs to become what? You know, I'm just goddess? an ordinary human compared to all of you. So. Hey. No. Same boat then. Awesome. Thought I was the only loser here. Yeah, but you're a human that's died like 20 times in this <laughs> So technically, you both are like phoenixes. Oh, well, I'm pro. Well, I can turn into one. <laughs> I was like, yeah. hey, Lucas, wanna make a Anusha Khan a phoenix sorcerer, a new character? <laughs> wanna make Zenim hate us? <laughs> I mean, you're gonna hate yourself if you play that, so go right ahead. Uh, I mean, Leos did die the most, so that makes him maybe a phoenix, but Arliss did come back from his ashes, so... Yeah, Leos did it. Mm. Oh. I don't think it's really a race. Than anyone wants to win on who died the most, is it? Yeah, it's the race to becoming the top loser, as far as I'm concerned. Well, oh, uh, I'm kidding. Yeah, they, no, well, there's definitely something to it. I mean, I mean, dying all the time there is is definitely the there is definitely a strong correlation with you us failing a lot. No. Yeah. You know, whenever you die, you could consider it a failure unless you're trying to kill yourself. Hey, in that case, actually, you. <laughs> I'm actually pro I'm probably yeah. bad. So. Arliss is leading. Yeah, you raise your quota um, or your success rate or whatever. Yeah, one out of three was voluntary, you know? Pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Sardis was also voluntary? Um, not really. I mean,. It I'm was. Sure counts. You got tricked he, into it. it you were oblivious to the consequences of a certain agreement that you made, right? That's Based. how it is. Yeah, I didn't realize that this that, that was going to happen. All right. You know, it doesn't get much more morbid than the topic we have right now. You know, just yeah, joking, talking about all of our deaths. 
Mm -hmm. that seems the fact that we can laugh about it, that's a good thing. <laughs> so technically, who is in the lead for the death poll? Yeah. Yeah, Leos. Leos has overall most of the leaves. Well, yeah. just just wait until you leave more than 30 feet away from Treg and get out of that no fear aura. That's when the existential crisis creeps in. <laughs> so as long as you're in Trigger's aura, bad jokes. Oh, good, or, uh... Like being next to Trigger is like being on antidepressants. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, do you want this? Uh... I'll hand Leo's sword back. He's fucking boring. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, well, I'm probably uh, I'm with the need. Well, I think it's time for me to put on the green armor. I need a bit of cover. <laughs> <laughs> I think if if how many times has it? Well, if all my deaths have taught me something, is that maybe I should start wearing proper armor. And not that leather fetish thing that I've been wearing before. Took you all this time now? Hmm? I've been trying to armor myself as much as I can. Yeah. See? You died you Actually, died you very want to little. Actually, shield if you want. Ah, uh, sure. Uh, shield of many faces. It's just a normal shield, but it imitates your face. So if you have an expression, you can... Oh. Nah. Uh, I uh, maybe later. Let's postpone that for now. If he gives uh, a shit to Leo, it's gonna become a shield of resting bitch face. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's going to be. So, we uh, taking yeah. a trip. Do you want to warn your brother or not? Just. Oh, yeah, sure. Well, you don't have to unless you really feel like, hey, let's announce ourselves. I mean, he's kind of expecting us to go there anyway, right? Yeah, at some point. Just not yeah. probably not sure when. Yeah, fuck it. Let's make it a proper killing fest, right? Got all surprise festival, yes. Yeah. We head over there tomorrow, I think. Yeah. Need to rest up. Do we need May to go tomorrow? Does anyone need to rest? I don't know. Well, uh, actually, when I check her shit, uh, Milora, I'm pretty sure you got a long rest because uh, the resurrections were on different days, so you should have your stuff at full. Yep. And true resurrection doesn't give any kind of like minuses to your stuff. Uh, but okay. Leo, you, which I don't know, I don't remember if true resurrection brings you up at full hit points or at one hit point. Um. I mean, it doesn't say you begin at one hit point, it just says it cures everything and closes all wounds, so I'm gonna say you're at full hit points. But cool. you'd still need to rest to recover your spell slots and stuff like that. <sighs> uh, things. Words. I need to talk to Lady Kazari, you figure out what kind of message you wanna send and... We probably will have to go tomorrow because Lady Kazar will kill me, so you will have to resurrect me tomorrow. Oh yeah, that's, that's a good fair point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We still have enough diamonds, right? Yeah, we have one more. Yeah, and we can get a couple more refined, so it should be fine. Do we all want to give a part of ourselves again, like a lock of hair or whatnot? Uh, for what is it? This new thing that you developed while I was off? No, it's for when people die without oh. leaving anything behind. No ashes, you know, you get disintegrated. Your ice puddle. Oh, and it helps with oh, the resurrection, or is it just for fun? Yeah, it helps. It's needed, I think. Oh. Some piece. Is it? For at least uh, the lower version. Oh. No idea about the higher one. You're the expert on that, to be honest. I can perform the lower version. Uh, you're talking about race dead, you need the whole corpse. Yeah. But if you want somebody to reincarnate you, you do need a piece of a body. It's oh. probably only good for scrying if you have like a body part. And that. Okay. No. I don't want to be reincarnated. I don't want that. So, no, thank you. Alright. Uh, have fun while I get myself killed, another. Have fun. Yeah. Um, 
as you walk away from Trega, who you have aptly named Mr. Shine number two, who, I mean, actually, to be fair, like, after two months in the strange ice world, Trega, you have, like, like a centimeter of hair, like a centimeter and a half, so you're no longer quite as shiny. Like, your chest hair have grown out. I mean, you don't have... I mean, um... Your chest fuzz has grown out because you're half-elf, you don't have chest hair. <laughs> yeah, they're not as manly as they uh, yeah. can be. Your father was a human, not a dwarf. So, you don't get manly hair. Uh, yeah. Uh... Alright, uh, so Leos, you walk back into the house uh, with about the others. Do you wanna discuss something about his gun? I'm just gonna discuss cool one-liners to say when he kills his brother for Zardos. <laughs> I fair? actually like no, to... off camera. <laughs> oh, sorry, go ahead. Um, I'd actually like to do divination, but we can do it after um, Leos and Kazar's interaction. Uh, that's gonna take a while. Do you know what you're gonna be doing? What you're gonna be asking? Yeah, she wants to ask how she can find the um. Oh god, where's the? Hold on, I had it. I just had it up. How she can find the borders between matter and dream and the spire of altar. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna think about what I'm gonna say you, so we'll figure out the ritual. Whenever I come up with an appropriate response. Um, okay. Because I said the DC way to hype for myself to come up with an appropriate response. <clears throat> anyway. Uh, Alright, and. Uh, is that the Strega? Anything you wanna do? Uh, yeah, I'll just send a message to Burroughs. Do you have the text ready? Are you sending it directly to Burroughs? Yes. Oh. I haven't talked to him in a long time. Uh, Very long uh, time. Yeah. Well, stay next to Malora. I've lost her once. Not letting that happen again. Out of character. Oh, I feel so loved. <laughs> Still got those ice shards in your pocket there. response relatively quickly <clears throat> I am looking forward to your return brother there are great plans ahead for us Um, alright, and, oh uh, yeah, and Sidious, you go into the mansion? Yeah. Alright. Um, well, Lady Gazar wasn't standing behind the door waiting for you, because that is uh, far below her station, so you are forced to uh, walk around a little bit and you find her in her uh, personal part of the mansion. Um, make me an inside check. If you wanna, you don't have to. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Alright. That's a very good roll. 
Um, they look how horrid and everything bitch faces. Huh? Actually, I'm. It's okay, because it's in here. Uh, bad. Not good enough. Alright. So she was I'm like chilling, having a book open, having an upside down book open that she closes and puts away as you can like try to be polite and knock on the if you're trying to be polite, I don't know. But draw attention to yourself. Yeah, always. Yeah. Hands up. I'm close to you and And it looks at you for a while. You are a popular man, aren't you? Yeah, I guess. <clears throat> at least to the bad guys. It is hard to compete with guns. Oh, yeah. Or stupid elementals that don't prefer to negotiate or talk or listen. Honestly, I thought I did the right thing, but oh, fuck me. Ah. Well, here they got the word, so that's good. Yes. I was quite surprised by who got it. Yeah. I thought that was going to be different. Yes. Oh. That next... will complicate things. Yeah, he has to learn Draconic first. Yes. And... He doesn't seem to be as quick of a learner as some others. I think you'll make progress soon enough. Eventually, yes. Yeah. Well, I did help, did have help by point at the necklace. We could yes. just give it to him. I'm not sure it would work, but I suppose you could try. Um, oh, by the way, sorry for dying again. That was honestly not what I was expecting in that situation. I thought I could my t talk my way out of it, at least this once. Oh. It is comparable to talking to a wall, I suppose, yes. Yeah, and sometimes it's better to just hit the wall instead of talking to it. It appears. Um, to be fair, I doubt that your attempt at show force would be as successful as it was, had you antagonized the elemental from the beginning. It is obvious from the debriefing that your comrades have given me that it has gone quite easy on you. I don't doubt you would have been successful, but the outcome could have been similar. Yeah. That's a fair assumption. Especially if you believe it can't die, as it stated. But let's not talk about that creature anymore since we're done with that chapter. Let's look ahead. I think 
we will need some help with Melora trying to find her path. The Raven Queen made it quite abundantly clear that we will need everything that we have. Or mm. everything that we can get. Yes. Although I disagree with whatever she has done to you. I think she misjudges your talents. I don't know what to say to that. Oh, I died a lot. And that was certainly frustrating. I would prefer if we would take time in our self-imposed exile as we're learning the words. Perhaps a couple of months even. Honestly, as much time as we need to be fully prepared. Is there any has there been any development I've been traveling after my return while I was waiting for the key to charge I had a conversation with your king and with the lords of Nebel they have agreed to play along if my assumption about the dragon's plans are correct and they are satisfied with establishing themselves as mere overlords, demanding tribute, and not beginning a genocide. Good. Until we are ready to strike. Do we expect more than the Mother of Dragons to return? Well, it has been at least three centuries, three and a half since she has gone, and you've seen two children of hers. So, she will bring more children. I... do not know. Okay. But she was called a mother for a reason. <laughs> well, okay. Any news about Gaul? I certainly wouldn't mind if they tried to resist the Mother of Dragons. See where that gets them. Mm, I have to admit I didn't even bother looking into that. You might <laughs> want to ask your king about it. Mm. There has been no more battles, if that's what you're asking. That's good enough. Thank you. Oh. What's she, on your mind? She sits down again and points towards the other chair. I sit down. While you were gone, we had a conversation with your comrades. They have expressed an option for me travel to the world of dragons and retrieve the big small I think to you I can say that I doubt and that is possible mm -hmm. you want to share why you think it's not possible for you No, but I think it is time. 
though I would prefer that would remain between us. Sure. If it is quite funny how your group sees danger in every shadow, but how accepting you have been of my researching my knowledge. Oh, well, we definitely suspect you to be a dragon, but... <laughs> That oh. would have been quite a plot twist. Yes. We, well, we have been wondering, but we gotta place our trust somewhere. It can be very exhausting to be uh, distrusting of everyone. And, you know, I always think you deal with the situations when you get there. And hmm. until then, I decided to trust you. And so do they, at least partially. Thank you. Well, thank you for all the support. We wouldn't even know where to go without you, to be honest. We would just probably just be running around the the, the fields around Koetsung looking for danger, not finding it. Yes, I've been having thoughts about that as well. And there is another thing I wish to tell you, but do listen to the story first. Sure. Ah... Uh. I suppose it would count as an old story even for an elf like me. Sometime before the dragon fall, there lived a powerful pile of mage named Quarion Vermilion. Oh, Vermilion, I suppose. And. You have heard the name, at least from me, of the matriarch of the Red Dragon Fight, the Hustra. They've met, and his Powers were apparently impressive enough, but they had a fickle but exuberant relationship. After it ended, Rahatra has disappeared, only to return sometime later with three little girls she claimed to be their children. She left them with a mage and disappeared. We featured in legends and various events, including the Dragonfall, but never reunited with the mage. Not as a family, at the very least. Quarion was not happy and fused, but he took the girls in, sensing their latent arcane abilities. The girls grew up fast displaying the fiery temple of their mother and the beauty both their parents possessed. More importantly, they were geniuses with arcane arts, learning magic quickly and at a very young age. One of the girls has showed an exceptional attitude, doing magic in ways her father didn't know could be used. Sometimes without use of words or arcane forcing. When they hit puberty and grew up 
her true nature became obvious as pirate scales appeared on her skin. She was a sorcerer of her mother's draconic bloodline. Most of the girl's achievements and stories are lost in legends and during the Dragonfall. But Dragonfall is uh, saying they changed everything. As you can imagine, neither of them could avoid being involved in such an event. But while my mother, Telessa, and her wizard sister, Array, fought on the side of humankind, the sorcerer's sister, Layasa, hoped that by helping the Dragonflight, she would reunite with her mother. Why? For power, she sought herself as a dragon, or simply wanting to meet her mother, I do not know. By the end of the war, only my mother was left alive. She escaped from it, retired from her life as a mage, and dedicated herself to starting a family. Me and my sister Morati were a result of that. <laughs> Rather, quick result, or I suppose even to an elf. Such a uh, Cataclysm is a strong enough reason to propagate. Sadly, none of us understood what our mother meant while describing the horrors of war. I chose to pursue my own path in magic while my sister married the Corella family. Becoming obsessed with learning about dragons, I questioned my mother's part in the war, but all she could do was warn me not to lose myself in the search. Obviously I did. I had to force her hand, and my mother spoke of the Great Gears and the events of the Fall. Right to, before the Gears killed her. Her last words gave me enough to direct my research in the proper direction. Obviously, I myself was not bound by this guess. I shared what I learned or assumed with you. But after I found a doubt, you'll find an elf that still survives from that time. To remember things that would be of use. Of that will be willing to sacrifice themselves for a hint if you demand answers from them. Nevertheless, a wizard or not, the blood of a dragon flows in my way, and much like my niece today, it was quite apparent in my use. I think I ran the Namaway's temper by giving her the knowledge she seeks. But I can ask Trego for the adventures I had before that and the behavior she has displayed. While I myself have shown no skill for sorcerer's arts, I doubt that my bloodline will be unnoticed if I were to travel to the dragon world, considering my heritage, I find my chances to persuade them of my intentions and obtain the world dubious at best, suicidal at worst. Mm. I see. So... They might assume that just because you're... 
a descendant of a dragon that they fought against that you would have ulterior motives. Yes. Oh, that sounds very judgy. Uh... It sounds appropriately cautious when you consider the story of chromatic dragons. But... Okay, so what exactly can I tell them to give, convince them to help us? What if they ask me, hey, by any chance, any uh, descendants of uh, draconic nature in your vicinity? And I would assume I would have to answer truthfully. It would be better not to lie, yes. And then I would probably end up in the same situation that I would tell them that I trust you and they perhaps say, how can we trust someone who involves himself with such a creature if that creature doesn't even attempt to come here to persuade us that they are of good nature or is that not how dragons might react what if they see this as a sign of cowardice or or not not no sorry i retract that not cowardice but ill intent ill intent to avoid confrontation if the dragons are as wise as we assume them to be, shouldn't they be able to read your intent? Couldn't we just say, hey, let's put ourselves in a zone of truth, make sure we don't have any magic on us, and speak the truth? I mean, I, mean, I, I assume that it might be magic that would prohibit the effects of the zone of truth to work, but there are ways to identify those means. The dragons have always been well disposed towards the short-lived races. And honestly, I am banking on the same reason I have chosen to trust you. I believe that they, as I did, would think themselves as a good judge of character and see the good intentions that you bear. Okay, why wouldn't they see that in you? I mean, your your mother and her sister fought on the side of the humans. Haven't they proven themselves? Or was there an ever-remaining, I don't know, discontent towards them? I do not know. I mean, I will leave it up to you. Uh, up to you. I, I couldn't even imagine con uh, demanding from you to come with us. And hmm. but I can imagine some of you as well. <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> I'd rather not. I, I would. <laughs> 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 I mean, I mean, how are they going to force you to come with them? How? how? I couldn't even see this play out. Well, I wouldn't push it past them to try. Uh, no, I think... Nevertheless, 
You have I to understand. admit, as I admit, that while for your group, for many in your group, the reasons for your behavior are highly illogical and based simply on your... I don't know, goodness? Feeling of responsibility? I frankly have no idea why it's the risk of life for such a reason. I do not share completely in those reasons. I want those words not just because I want to save the world I live in. I want them because I've always wanted to know it. I always wanted to know what it was about. How they managed to banish the dragons. What power could do it. If I could learn that power. So, here's the thing. First of all, I don't mind. Because I have... Look at... Look at Trego, look at Melora, look at Arlis. These three beings are immensely powerful and they could des devastate a city easily on their own. Yet they wield immense power. Yet they use it for good. Oh, they just frankly, have had time to be corrupted, right? There's, well, I think that there are powers that have a stronger chance of corrupting someone, sure. But in the end, it's always a decision that you do take. For a, someone like Said Nevek or all of these motherfuckers that <laughs> followed him, it was always a decision. There is maybe, maybe Zardos' sister who was like kind of forced into it, but at the end she also made a decision to switch sides. And well, not really switch sides, but but to fight against us, against her brother. And. All I've seen is that you can force people with magic to do a very specific thing. But that's just one event where they are technically forced to do it. But to really become powerful and misuse that power is always something that comes from your character. That is made as a decision. <laughs> and... I trust you that no matter how strong the power is, I think you know really well which power you are not supposed to wield. Just looking at the at the chamber of swords that are crazy. I think you you pretty much know the line. And if something would be so horrible and too powerful, I think you might find a way to rid yourself of that knowledge if you feared you could be, be corrupted by it. Roll me persuasion check with advantage. Oh, damn. That's a shitty roll. It is a shitty roll. Jesus Christ, that roll. Kazar laughs and... As you kind of like... Leaned over to... Uh, in your express... Uh, she 
puts her hand on yours. I'm glad to see that whatever she did to you did not change the things I found so dear about him. They've almost persuaded me of this. And this is why I believe you will be able to persuade them. I can only hope. Whether my presence and the chance or not will. I wouldn't know unless I come. And still, the truth remains that it is. It would be reckless of us to put all baskets in the same. all eggs in the same basket. That's true. I and mean, if, if we. if we fail. My hand will be forced. But it might be better for you to go first. Yeah. I feel like. I feel like the dragons might be more open to discussion than a fucking elemental. That is just there and exists. So, I mean, I'll try. Well, I have nothing to add. Well, no, no, it doesn't. I think it might be time for us to, you know, make the people demigods or whatever. I have to admit, I am getting rather peeved at having my things taken away by gods. Yeah. Uh, let's try to prevent that. Um... Before you leave, there is... Reloaded. There is one more thing I wanted to say. Judging by how oh, and judging by your surprising a warm warm welcome of my heritage, it might not even be foolish of me to suggest it. I've been considering our current situation, the threats we face. I've been experimenting with this concept of a guardian for as long as Nebo exists. Some are powerful enough to defend the civilization from powers beyond its ability to fight, allowing it to grow, continue to exist. But neutral enough that they will experience enough conflict and struggle and they will evolve and grow and avoid the stagnancy of this. Yet it is obvious that I alone is insufficient. For all I can hardly be more than in two places at the one at the one time. I
the emergence of your group can be called nothing short of a miracle. The chain of events that allowed you to obtain this much ability in this short of a time and survive it all is highly improbable, further accentuated by your friends that did not make it here. I considered establishing an organization to rear guardians unlike you in a safe environment sure they aren't lost the dragons but with proper support and education to ensure they understand the responsibility comes with their ability their knowledge to make proper decisions and the willpower to remain sufficiently detached after all this dragon conundrum is over I was wondering if you would interested in joining me in this endeavor so you're trying to create some sort of organization where with people of extraordinary talent like yes secretive or is it going to be public well i am public there is a lot to say for Knowledge of my presence here is deterrence for hostiles. So yes, public, at least mostly public. Yeah, I'm in. It sounds awesome. <laughs> Do you have a name for that organization? <laughs> The Uber people of Aldana. <laughs> I think that sends the wrong message. Mm, yeah. The defenders. The. Mm. Ah, you'll figure something out. No. I have enough money to pay people to come up with a good name. <laughs> uh, yeah, there will probably be something cool. I don't know. I have so many ideas. The... Ah, well, we'll think about it once we get there. Oh, we pay someone to... You pay someone. I don't have any money. <laughs> uh, I literally don't have any money on me. Ooh. Um, no, you should just stuck your pockets. Uh, I think at this point I don't really need money anymore. I'm like, well, I have five silver pieces that will get me a roof for a night if I need it. I wouldn't anyway. say that money is a superpower, but it kinda is. Yeah. Well. Oh, well, maybe I'll get that superpower at some point. But right now, I think we just have to kill Zardas' brother. Or watch him kill him, I don't know. Or watch him get killed by him and then kill his brother. I don't know how things will pan. You think it's gonna be that easy? I mean, I've seen Zardas kill a lot of people very fast. Yes, I've seen my automated kitchen device chop a lot of things very fast. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean... 
Oh. Well. If he can't defeat him on his own, I'll help him. I can't help but have noticed your exclusion of names when you considered paragons among the group. Are you concerned? Oh, no. I, I think in his art, Zardas is really good. He's meddling with a power that has been considered evil in the past, but as with all the people that I surround myself with, I judge him on his actions. And I trust that he will not be corrupted. Other things that he's meddling with. And I think, honestly, we need the strength. Ah, also, I think he's a good guy. He will handle it. Otherwise, I'll just kill him. But, well, he's technically dead. I, th I think, I think, I would consider him one as well. Well, you know him better than I do. And I still don't barely know him, but I would call it instinct. But it is good to consider countermeasures. In case either of your colleagues touch something they shouldn't have touched. Yeah. I've been thinking a lot about this, and I do have plans or strategies when. Things turn out right. Mm. Also, the the Raven Queen did, you know, make sure that my next death hopefully doesn't come as fast. I hope her meddling does not. bring us a dark future. Hm. Well, we'll only know once we see it. I... Honestly, she did teach me a few things. Definitely less scared than before. So. Oh. Mm. Mm. Well, I think it's time for me to go back and get the ball rolling. I fear so. It was good talking to you again. We don't do that often enough, I think. And thank you for sharing your story. I appreciate that. Don't worry about it. I don't care. It's... Been a while since we had time to enjoy ourselves. Yes. Mm -hmm. Perhaps once this is over and we're a little bit more certain of ourselves, you'll play me that song again. Yeah. Definitely. 
Ouais. I take her hand, kiss it, and say, Gotta go. Kill things. I'll watch things get killed. I don't know. See ya. Hi. Get out. Get rest back to the rest of the group. Well, you're alive. So we leaving. I thought she was going to be busy with you first and next. Yeah. Well, uh, I think Valora wanted to ask her something. Oh, no, it wasn't that. She was asking, um, she was doing the, um, oh, what was that spell called? Damn it. Uh, divination thing? Yes, thank you. So, let's go? Or are we waiting for something? For the gods to answer. Well, maybe the gods will answer while we are on our way. Yeah, maybe something like that. Should be fine. Let's take three, I think, right? Probably the best way to get there somewhat quickly. I mean, I could also turn into a Kirin and windwalk us. Will take a while, though, to fly there. A couple of hours. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's that's like a uh, eight hour travel or six hour or something. Yeah, it's like yeah, six hours. Sardas, how you doing, buddy? If you're ready for whatever shit is to come. Yeah, pretty much. Not much. Uh, not much else to do but to. Uh... Go ahead and finish it. All right. Hmm. Do you want to okay. take this on your own, or should we just jump in whenever? I uh, figure a door would be fine, but I guess if he's a, uh, if he feels like avoiding fighting me alone or trying to. It really doesn't matter. Duel's fine, but if he's not up for that, he's jumping. <laughs> he's not exactly a man of honor, so... Alright, how about this? You start your duel, and if he plays dirty, you'll just fuck him up real good. And if it looks like you're starting to fail, you'll fuck him up. And then you just get the final stab. Okay. Let's see how things go. Okay. Oh, let's get going. Let's find a tree out here and then let's move. We do that, we find a tree and we. I don't know. Climb it. Yes, that's a good idea. Play in it for a while. Wait from it, yes. Hmm. Then we awaken the tree so we can talk to it some more and then... We go through it and he like screams in horror. Yeah, something like that. Hmm. <laughs> <sighs> So are we ready to go do this? We're doing it. Yeah, whenever you're ready, we can go. 
And whenever the gods feel ready. The god is never late. Where's he early? He arrives precisely when he means to. <laughs> Sounds On about right. Word, what was that? Sorry. Um, she said, on your word, Zardos. Oh, yeah. Ready whenever. Okay. I look for a tree and I will cast Transport via Plants. Mm hmm. And what's the destination? Um, fuck, I missed the name. Um, Zardos's hometown where he's never winner. Do you remember a tree nearby? I know we've I know we've seen some, but wasn't there one by that inn that was a bit away from Neverwinter where or where Neverwinter was? Yeah, define a bit. God, I don't remember how far uh, it was. It was somewhere around here. Yeah. Over here. I know it wasn't far from the blind forest because we had just gotten out of it. I mean, we we have been to Neverwinter where it used to be. We searched the cliff there. No trees and... there, though. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, that I I do remember. There was no trees in that area. So a quick what? Quick hike from the uh, blind forest. Fifty mile hike. The other one that I remember is somewhere south from Z, but that's even further away. So yeah, yeah. I think blind forest is the best. We, we could also go to the 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 village where we fought the shadow giants, where we met Rasim, which was around here, I think. It should be a lot closer. Yeah, Should there, be there, were, there were definitely trees there. Okay. So much going on in that village. You're welcome to figure out your travel uh, accommodations on your own while I force myself to write a specific themed poetry <laughs> on the spot. <laughs> Honestly, if you need to take a time, you can just message to message to me later and we can... I am taking my time while you figure out yeah. your travel. I figured I heard the... Travel your plans to the inn. Did you figure out how you go from there on? Did I miss it? Um, we could just yeah. walk the rest. If you want to do that, sure. Do you want me to turn into Kirin? Someone could sit on my back. Kirins are probably notoriously helpful against undead. Sounds okay. good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. All right. Then, uh, once we are through the tree, um, to the inn, I will cast True Polymorph on myself, turn into a Kirin, and then cast Wind Walk on all of us. Oh, shit. There we go. Is that abjuration? Transmutation. Q. 
here and talk. Alright, so you expand your nine, nine slayer spell slot. Yep. And confide yourself to the bulky form of a Kirin. Yeah, once we're past the, th yeah. uh, the tree. Alright, uh, if I remember correctly uh, and saw what you mark on the map, it's gonna take you about two hours to reach the bay. Mm -hmm. Which means you will be reaching it right about noon. Um. And somewhere on the way there, Melora gets her divine revelation. And it says, You put your left arm in, you put your left arm out, you do. It, it, it says, it, 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 no, it just says, look to your left. Oh, okay. yeah. Did I fuck it up? Yep, I fucked it up. Oh well, whatever. I mean, to be fair, she would have told everybody the answer or what she yeah, got. Yeah, but I wanted everybody to be confused. Have a place. Does it say about the split? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, I mean, uh, that sounds like Fevald. Sounds to me like we need to go there on a very stormy night, and then just l search the entire forest. <laughs> or we can yeah. just make the storm. Yeah. Do you have some of storms? Yeah. I. I mean, technically, as we both could just control the weather control it, yeah. and just fuck that shit up. Yep. Shrine that lost due to time. Okay, and it looks as he gets up into the sky and starts sparkling and glittering and releasing uh, weighted particles of kiriness into the sky as it serves to create clouds around them. Yeah, I'm gonna be like a, 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 a. And then as a kid farts, the storm rumbles. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Uh, okay, so you ponder that for a moment. Uh, and think to yourself once more. Huh. The gods work in mysterious ways. <laughs> um... But yeah, you uh, travel wind form from the 
in area towards Neverwinter Bay. And considering your height of flight, it is pretty far away from the bay that you notice a topographic change. As in, there is no more bay. And the city is kind of back in place. Not really. I mean, it's hard to call it a city anymore. But something is there. And... Definitely. Certainly. The... Cliffs. And the... And the dark-looking castle of the Melson family upon them. Towers and... Looms. Above the ruins of the city. Seemingly untouched and undisturbed by the transmigration. Do we see hordes of undead? You aren't quite that close. Oh, okay. How, how close are we? So uh, how, how much t t minutes would it take us to travel to the border of the city? I'm gonna say you'd notice it uh, there, at least like 10 kilometers away. Mm. So like, let's say 5 miles, just because I didn't want to do mass. Okay. Which means 1 sixth of an hour, so 10 minutes out of the city. At your speed. Well, since you're keeping quiet, I assume you continue. Yeah. Yeah. And as you come within like a kilometer of the city, yeah, you do see uh, many, many uh, humanoid figures crawling over the ruins of the city, uh, making perception checks. Yeah. Let's go, let's go, Stardust. Let's go. Oh, sorry. Please add uh, four to that. I forgot. Kirin has. What the fuck, Stardust? Leaving me hanging. Oh, All right. Uh, there's a lot of them. Not. Not quite the level of what you saw back in the Shadowfell, but thousands. Melora, they don't seem to just be shambling about, they seem to be uh, cleaning it up, taking apart the rubble, mostly that kind of stuff. Undead worker. They're rebuilding it? They hired the uh, undead construction company. <laughs> Very cheap labor. Using the ruins of Neverwinter to make the city of the undead. Kind of like Lordaeron. What? Like what? Um, just Melora should know, I guess. Jesse should know. Yeah. Something from WoW. Wow. Okay. Um. Wow. Hey, before we fly in, um. Let's land for a moment so I can cast a spell on Zardos. Sure, I think we should walk it in anyway, so might as well land like a, a little bit out. Uh, and then go yeah. on in. Yeah, and let's find out if the zombie workers attack us or if they're like now citizens of the city and they're just, oh, we're just cleaning up our home. Walk, walk! <laughs> I hope it's not like that. That would creep me out. Honestly, I would. I. Uh, ugh, I don't care. Probably less work for us getting to his brother if they don't attack us. 
I mean, I guess I guess we landed in the first place to have this conversation, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah right. actually. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna cast um, Freedom of Movement on Zardos. You might need it later. I don't know how stunny or paralyzing your brother is. <laughs> Well, he's definitely stunning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyone else want that? I think I if, we, if we're proceeding with a duel, I think. I think I all these are say no. To some oh, nice yeah. oil. You're, you're squishy. You might need it. <laughs> Pass it on on him as well. Well, you're not officially squishy anymore. You're semi-squishy. You have 100 hit points now. I'm squishy. It's okay. <laughs> I can enhance his ability if he wants it. I mean, you, what's... what's, you, what's uh, you want it? Enhance ability... It can uh, also later on if we're if we go inside and the duel is about to start, I can cast project protection from evil and good on you. Maybe it helps. I don't know how devilish. Should protect him from himself. Demonish. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how devilish, fiendish your brother has become, uh, but it might help. I don't know. Okay. Let's get the walk hang up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's put holy water or powdered silver and iron on Zardos. That's gonna end well. <laughs> <laughs> Spell my pockets with you. <laughs> Here, Zardos, hold my silver. Do you smell that smell? <laughs> Oh, also, yeah, I don't have holy water on myself. Does it cost, cost anything? No. Yeah, it's, it consumes. It consumes, but it doesn't cost anything. So, technically, it doesn't matter. Yeah, but you can um, Unless oh, okay. I say that it matters. Oh, I thought, I thought it was also for consuming spells. Um. Okay. Where was cool. I? Yeah, so you landed like 10 minutes out of the city and had that conversation about uh, Harris's brother being highly dishonorable because none of you have met him before and then immediately switched to how you can ambush and jump him without a proper duel and cast all of the buffs on Zardus that you could do to swing the duel in your... We never uh, said he was dishonorable. We said he wasn't a man of honor. You know? Yes. <laughs> we never claimed to be so ourselves either. Also, also I don't remember the word honorable being involved in the duel challenge that Zardo sent. It was just duel. That didn't mean it could be. A and there was no duel. exception of duel from the other side, you know? It can be only dual if two people agree to it. If it's a one-sided, it is called murder. <laughs> and we are very good at that. You are very good is at it, that, yes. Is it really murder if they're already dead? Um, oh, Barris, Barris might not be dead yet. Yeah, um, I don't believe he has enough of the sword to make that transition. Yeah. I mean, he can summon an army full of undead. I can still agree to the duel, but if it's a one, if Zardos one shots him, it's still technically a duel. Yes, I'm sure that's how it's gonna go. Anyway, you march, I assume, at this point on legs towards the city, or do you, or do you transform and fly as clouds again? I mean, you could also get on my back. Because you're still like five miles away. Oh, I thought we were a kilometer away. No, five miles. Oh, I thought you were. All oh, right, right. Yeah, right, 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 right. You would have to be much closer to actually see us and then then stop down to walk. So yeah, let's say like you're a mile away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's walk it in. All right. 
So you walk it in, which takes 20 minutes. Because that's how long it takes to walk a mile. Yes. Yes, your travel speed is 3 miles per hour. I mean, you can move at high speed if you wanna. Don't need to argue, let's just go. Okay. Uh, and... Um, considering that you are bringing a bright, shiny, golden uh, beacon of light with you, aka Leos, uh, it does seem that your approach has not uh, been unnoticed. As coming close as those of you with good enough perception, uh, so not Ardas and not Zardas, I can see a small group of uh, humanoids gathering and kind of just waiting for it. want to find out if they talk now. License and registrations, please. <laughs> Uh, how was that phrase? Uh, no, it doesn't exist here. Okay, okay, I'll find it later. Should I send him another message, let him know we're here, or just walk in? Uh, might be wise to do so. Maybe, maybe his guard dogs or whatever that is will stand out. Uh, maybe, yeah. Shouldn't make much of a difference. Hey, maybe you should tell him, hey, come outside of the city, I'm waiting here. Get get him get, get him to, to dismiss his... Uh, uh, Home advantage, you know. Now you come here. Can you oh. hear it? <laughs> well, he already made it so far, I think his brother could take a few steps to get closer. Fair enough. Yeah, I'll just send a message. I am not so foolish to take a duel on you. Hmm. <laughs> yes, brother. I have been informed of your arrival. My... Uh... Man, we'll show you Dark Castle. Oh, well, they're rolling out the red card, of course. Very nice. Whatever an undead red card. They're rolling out card. the red card card. <laughs> it's red because of the wine, not because of the blood. So, I assume you continue walking yes. right into the yes. So, on approach, uh, you uh, see that the group of humanoids is like a dozen of knights in uh, red enameled armor with um, mostly shields and spears standing at attention. Along with a uh, like crooked, old, nasty-looking man, it's kind of holding onto a staff and waiting for you to approach within talking distance. Just walk up. Hello there. I'm just giving you time to say is a word. The word being fireball. <laughs> got, um, got it on, on the back burger. Yeah. Uh, as you approach, the old man kind of like takes two steps forward 
and kind of like fixes the hood, revealing a really like ugly old, like, weedy bearded mug. Like, imagine a hag, but it's a man. Mag. Does he look undead? Uh, make me a perception check. Mm, yes. Nice. Not very nice. <laughs> uh, that was, that's one ugly motherfucker. I haven't seen him before. Uh, this. Um. I mean, his skin seems to be more like old yellow rather than undead white, so you don't think so? I mean, Zardus doesn't look very undead, aside from paleness, to be fair. But you don't see any fangs, you don't see any rotting flesh, you don't smell any smell of rotting flesh. Well, actually, you do smell rotting flesh, but you don't think it's coming from the guy. I think it's just generally coming. It's not even the smell of rotting flesh, it's more like the smell of, you know, um, Undertaker's place. Mm. Well, apparently uh, he suffers from anemia with yellow skin. Uh, oh, his uh, kidneys don't work quite as well. No. Um, but yeah, he takes a couple steps forward and looks kind of up at you from his crooked stance and goes, Welcome back, Lord Zardus. We've been expecting your return. Follow me. Your brother is awaiting for you in the castle. Please forgive us for that. <laughs> <laughs> we welcome. <laughs> we are still revealing. I'm gonna laugh telepathically just to Heron's talent. <laughs> uh, very well, she'll do it. Kind of like <sighs> turns around and starts slowly shambling as the knights do, like you know, the like marching order, like. <laughs> And clanging with their weapons can just take a kind of escort positions around you. <laughs> Walk this way. It's 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 gonna take a while. The guy is the guy is a shambler, not a walker. Uh, but um, he seems to try and get you through like the more cleared up streets, the ones that like have relatively steel cobblestone streets, no huge fissures remaining after the multiple transitions between planes. And I mean, a lot of the city is fucked up, uh, even more than what you've seen in the Shadowfell, but a lot of the rubble has been moved into like piles, uh, and it looks like they are kind of gathering whatever stones and bricks can be reused that are, haven't been broken yet. Um, and some parts do look believable, even. Um, but it is still a rather sore and unpleasant track through the city, it takes you the better part of the remaining hours. At the end of it, you are facing the cliffs on which the castle stands, and you climb the one ink road that leads upwards, and finally face the keep itself. Now, Father Dearest, um, wasn't an opulent man, he was a fan of practicality. And the castle that he has rebuilt was not the fancy castle of Gaul or even the pretty fancy castle that 
Albert of Crozon lives in, but a full-fledged fortified military installment with multiple walls and narrow passageways and gates and the kill holes on both sides with unseen archers able to pepper whoever tries to storm these gates with arrows and pour oil and tar upon them. The gates stand open for you, guarded by... well, definitely undead soldiers, though these ones are seemingly not as well armored and armed and pretty looking as a blood red escort of yours. But the gates are opened, the bridges are lowered, the doors are unlocked, and the shambling guide shambles you up the narrow winding stairs towards what you, Zardos, recognize as the inner sanctum of your castle and where your family actually lived and past the courtyard where you remember you and um, Baros and um, I'm forgetting some names. And Valtari are trained in swordsmanship and uh, were uh, treated poorly by your swordsman teachers. And into the keep and into the dungeon and into what would pass as a um, uh, meeting hall slash throne room of the keep. Before you reach the stairs fill in with unnaturally bright red light like sun piercing through clear waters, except the waters are not quite that clear. And as you finally ascend the stairs and enter the hallways, you see the transformation that the hall has taken. It is Mostly untouched as far as masonry goes, although some of the statues and the columns have fallen apart and haven't quite been cleaned up, seemingly the result of the, trans of the transportation. The archers on the sides that would hold uh, courtiers and nobles that would visit your father are still there, as are the galleries on the second floor on both sides. The stairs that led up to the chairs upon which your father and your mother sat are there, but where the main approach was and where the chair stood. There is now a um, chalice overflowing with blood, surrounded in an aura of unholy destruction. The blood overflowing and spilling onto the throne and down the stairs and down the length of the room and disappearing, draining somewhere deeper into the castle. The galleries are filled with countless undead, leering at you with empty eyes, as more 
Red Armored Knights stand guard and watch you on approach. Your brother, who you haven't seen in many months, who you, comrades, have never seen before, turns hearing the footsteps of your approach and steps down to the ground level, leveling with you. His armored footsteps hanging loudly as he quickly approaches you. You see a tall man of primitive stature, dressed in full plate armor, adorned and designed with his white bones or the black animal of metal. He wears a drape of white fur around his shoulder, falling down into a black cloak that hugs his body. A handsome, strong-willed face with long black hair, horns rising upwards and piercing the sky and brilliant, solid golden eyes. I'm not sure if this will show you I do it like this. No, it won't because you're on the wrong page. But I think it is appropriate to show you the room. Mm. Oh, yes. Cool shit. And... Varus. Melissa. Your brother. I assume that you are leading party? Yep. And uh, not wanting to disrupt the flow of the conversation, uh, Zardos, oh not Zardos, uh, Lewis, I assume you're a cloud of gas, for Kirin would have no chance of fitting within these narrow hallways. Yeah, but I can pop back up into my norm, uh, into my Kirin form once we are in the room. Uh, yes, but your horns will scrape the ceiling. Okay. Um, and you have no chance of going through any of the doors up here or like going up to the second floor or anything. Because you're basically taking up what I'm kidding is 15 by 15, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, you're taking up like half a third of the room or half of the empty space. Yeah, I'm gonna just hang back and right. in that far. But as guards and uh, fan throughout the room and take their positions. Barros walks towards you and as he approaches you his arm flies from under the cloak and he steps towards you and attempts to embrace you. Well, do the same. As he envelops you with one arm and pats you on the back. It is good to have you return home, brother. I have been preparing, but without you, there is much I could not do. And this is where we're gonna take our break. Excellent, my cat is crying.
is just waiting to happen. And we're back. There's not gonna be any combat, so what if there's a map? So, uh, yeah, so Zardus bars gives you a hug. You get no dagger in your back, and he steps back and kind of like motions for you. Come, brother. I have a lot to discuss. Oh, the plans that are ahead of us. Yeah, good to see you too. What, uh, what plans are you talking about? Glorious, glorious plans. Now that there's only one left. Now that the ones whose power we borrowed a gun and busy. We are not tied by anybody, by anything. Um, that's one way to look at things. Look, brother. You've seen the city. You must have heard of my achievements on the battlefield. With oh. my army and my leadership and your servants and your wit, the two of us will be unstoppable. I will admit that would be quite the combination. So what do you have in mind? Well... I know that you have your... connections and your... sentiments about this country. If you wish, I'm willing to leave our ancestral home to you as it was meant to be, as it was planned all along. And me, I shall lead our family on glorious conquer to the south or to the east. There's land there, broken, destroyed, say, ripe for the taking. Most of the South do kind of suck. And they're kind of weak. So, you know. fought, a couple, fought one of their champions and he, it's pretty pathetic. He might do okay down there. You plan all this, but you do realize that the swords don't really allow us to do this together. If we wanted more power, but we don't need more power. We already have all we need. Look at this. Here points his hands at dozens of undead standing in a row. This army, it needs no rest, no food, no sleep. It can march endlessly, tirelessly. And every battle I take, there will be more bodies to reanimate. It is an unstoppable, unyielding tide. And through it, we can bring order and control and mellow the name to every single city we take. And how did you come upon this army? Same way you were given your powers, brother. And she taught me secrets, yes. And I have those in my employ. I know the tricks. And what of the chalice? The chalice is a 
of no use. Unless we reveal the sword. Correct. It is something rather odd to just leave sitting around here. Well, would you not take our home as your capital? As you and your servants take control of Aldana and take it for yourselves. I am perfectly fine watching over Aldana. Then we have an agreement. Or we could join forces together. And when we reach the other edge of this continent, there will not be a man or a woman that do not know our name. It does, does sound very nice. So what do you know of other matters going on in the world? Things happening beyond what you've been building here. I presume you speak of the dragons. Yes. I suppose they would be proverbial stick in our spokes. Indeed. We are currently working on ways to stop that, but it won't be easy. So. You wish to defend Aldana from these dragons? Well, not much use ruling over something if it's destroyed, is there? Mm. You are indeed as brilliant as I remembered your brother. This is a good plan. If we raise our army and drive away the dragons, and would not the men of this country chant your name? As I proclaim you as their king, a hero that killed their dragons. And then, once you and me join our powers together and raise those dragons as monsters of our army, who would deny us then? Mm. I was right to wait for your return. Always made the best plans, brother. Well, I'll try to think of more than what's directly in front of me. Usually helps. <sighs> if we are to stop the Mother of Dragons, we need more power. Would you be willing to give up your sword? You know that there is only one way I can give up my sword. Uh, technically, there's more than one. I'm but listening. But for the purposes here, the Yes, there is only one. I wish we had never stepped into this game Father put brought upon us. What do you mean, brother? Things have to be finished. Things have to end. 
if we don't do it ourselves, the sword will eventually compel us to do it. Turn on each other and end this. I've already felt the drive to do so on the last meeting of Altaria. So you would not join me? If only I could, but as I said, that would only be temporary. Sooner or later, the sword will wish to be reunited and force us to do so. So as Zenobia, you too fail to the allure of the blade. It's made itself your master rather than your tool. And if that's what you choose to think, that's fine. I do not need to choose, but that is the only truth. What other reason would you have to reject my order, my offer? Now, the primary reason would be, be that, like Zenobi, I think our family needs to give up. And killing me is your path toward that? Well, we're Melisand. Take our father's place as a sore ruler. Not truly my interest, but with the king, like I said, family. Melisons have to go. I see. I see. And I suppose I have failed you, brother. I was not able to reach you, for you lost your mind. <laughs> was that in character? No. Yeah, I think we all lost our minds a long time ago, shortly after Mother passed. From the blade, brother! I missed that. What did you say? From the blade, brother. It is the evil that holds upon you. I don't deny what this blade is. Well, then you are lost. As our family has always been. Well, has been for many years now. Fine, brother. And if we are to duel, and as the one who properly laid end to the Nobia's life, I claim the ownership of the third blade in your possession. By the rule of this game, it must be mine. No convincing you joining us. Why don't you take a step back there, buddy? What was that last part? You failed to kill our sister. Your ownership of her blade is without merit. Um, I think in reality I did. And it is not you that I speak to. Make me charisma saying so. Or fail it if you so desire. He gets a plus six. As you think that, you notice that the evil, corrupted, and dead nature of this place is so overwhelming. The aura you're so used to protect yourself 
is barely fighting against it. Limiting, limiting it to your square only. You are the only one protected by it. There will be no holiness in this place. Still, that is a 19 on your save as you hear the quiet voice of Blood Princess whispering in your ear. It does have a point, darling. He did kill her and you did not. Do you have anything to say against his argument? I thought you said the wish I made you him. Say again? I thought the wish I made moving the blade killed him. Well... Apparently it was not enough. Had not your father told you? How he has found your system? Broken. Mindless. But still living. Truly I hoped that once we got the chalice we could bring her back. This complicates things. Though not makes it impossible. If I have my full power on this. But for now, his claim stands. What do you have to say about this, darling? Why should I stay yours? Well, I was the one that fed the blade. And gave the opening to do something. Hmm. Make me persuasion roll. <laughs> nice. All right. Stardust is a new face of the party. Yep. <clears throat> I suppose you do have a point. I do think this is a faster way for me to get together. You see Barros jolt. <clears throat> and you too reject me. But what would I expect? <clears throat> Very well, brother. Let us be dual then. Like the noble souls we are. Like the noble soul I remember you to be. All of me against all of you. Though he hits the clasp on his chest and his cloak falls apart, revealing that all this time he has been missing his left hand. Something that has not been the way you remember him. Though after our sister's ambush, I am left to fight your handicapped. I hope you would not consider this as too much of an offense, brother. He's missing his hand, or is it just... He's one? missing his whole left arm. Well, that's unfortunate. Oh, fuck me. Your sister never went crazy. They just think that she was like key things of you. I say that telepathically to Zardos. Say what? Didn't he just say that he lost his arm in an ambush by your sister? What if she came to her senses and thought, okay, I'm gonna finish this family and the spell that you cast actually worked the way it was supposed to work. Then they just killed her. Because they think she's crazy as he just called you crazy and having lost your mind. From their perspective. Fuck him up. Yeah, that's what I figured it would be. I, I wish I could speak telepathically. 
So I hope you haven't lost any of your skill, Boros. My powers have tripled since the last time we met. No interruptions. My servants will stay aside and watch. As will yours. Do not expect it with my death. They will crumble to the ground with no leader. I fall on your side. And they will join this battle. Very well. I'm certain that while you will notice any attempts at foul play from my servants, yours will easily succeed in cheating and giving you an edge. I wouldn't know if I was not trained like you were, but you would know. You would know how you would win. And if that is the way you wish to win, so be it. But in that case, I suppose, brother, our father would be right about you after all. Yes, well, I don't have to worry about them interrupting. This will be you and I. Then let them take whichever place they wish to observe our fight from, and join me as we stand in blood and spill each other's. What about the rest? Where would you like to be? I'm gonna hold my position, I think. Same, I will just uh, float up a little bit on the carpet for a nice point of view. Uh, we don't have Melora. On the map. <clears throat> How high is it here, 15 feet? Um, the ceiling feet? is about uh, 10, 20 feet tall in the okay. center of the room. Because like they're ten feet uh, rising up to the second uh, story, and uh, yeah, and the bars basically explains to you that like this courtyard is basically your arena to do as you wish, and may the coward be cut down if they run. Right. JC, you should be at full hit points. Oh, I never fixed that. Thank you. Yes, you never did. Um. Uh, okay. Well, I think I need a different playlist. And I would argue, and this would be an appropriate moment. Pastoral initiative. Should we also roll initiative? Should we choose to intervene? Um, uh, sure. Okay. I mean, last time we sent a few of our members to face danger on their own, they died. I mean, but we couldn't do anything about it. Here we can intervene pretty quickly. Hmm. Um... Shit roll. Let's see. Okay, let me write you guys down first. And then... Oh boy, 26 Zardos. Uh, 
All right, so we have Zardos is at 26, and we have Melora with 18, and we have Leos with 14, and Drago with 8, and Arliss with 7. And on the other side, we have Mm, yeah, sure, whatever. Okay. Mark this a bit better, and let me check if I need to put any more notes on my stuff. Um, Sounds good. All right. Um, okay. Same switch the recording to another battlefield. And I think this will be sufficient. And switch. Um, well, Zardas, you do get the initiative. Alright, then I will just take a couple steps forward. Say, okay, brother, see how much you've grown. And I will. Yes, mm. so concentration. Yeah. All right, that's your action. Yeah. Uh, Baros lifts the sword, kind of like the defensive position. Yes, brother. And moves it in a weird way that it looks like the sword leaves after images of itself. As you see, the sword kind of like separate and begin to shifting. Like it's not quite there. And then he just takes the attack position and starts approaching you. And attempts. 
Yes, and attempts to have a tea. Um, okay, I think this is more important to have over here. That's very, very... I don't have enough table for all of this. Alright, so he shall attempt to strike you at disadvantage. Which means I require... Let's go in pairs. Now I'll use this die and this die. First attack. Um, 21 to hit. No. Yeah, I'll shield it. Alright. Second attack. 21 to hit again. Third attack. Natural one. Fourth attack. 20 to hit. Um, but as his attacks slice around you and miss you, you see them leave behind a pulsing red portal or oh. mm. a second mm. oh right no that's me being stupid Mm, yeah, alright, one second. I have done this wrongly. Because then you wouldn't see it. Which means I need to do it in a different way. But where his sword slices through air, he leaves behind pulsing red blood dripping tears. Remaining. Yeah. No. Will you listen to me, Roll20? I think that's asking too much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. ah, ah, good enough. As you remain, we were with this tent. And... And, and, and... Yeah. And I think that's it for him for now. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's your turn again. Unless somebody else wants to do something. Whatever. Well. Hmm. Yes, Zardos, uh, please start your turn. Actually, don't do anything. As you prepare to strike again, or actually he should be right next to you, or do something else, you feel as if blades strike at you from those dimensional tears. Uh, as you take 38 points of slashing damage. You may have your magic, brother. But my skills transcend this world. Is your initiative? Yeah, there. I need a con check. Alright, you don't need to do that. Yeah, that's a DC 19. Alright. And all the those marks he left gone, or are they still there? They are still there.
All right. So well, well, well. Let's see what you have learned some stuff. Guess there's no real need for me to go easy on you then. You never went easy on me, brother. And I will see how we do. That is a hit. And then, actually, it should be eight. I got the. Uh, oh, I have the magical bonus on here. You have no bonus over there. At all. Yeah. You're running wrong! Um, your weapon is not rolling a damage die, Thirst. Thirst is just two. It doesn't re it doesn't say it's rolling anything. It's just a two plus uh, the straight damage. So yeah. Wait, what? Yeah, it's not. It, Thirst isn't actually rolling any dice. Wow. Okay. And still, he did more than twenty-seven points of damage. No, he's gonna fix it and roll everything. Well, at least he's damned and gonna reroll the damage dice. <laughs> so, all this time, Zardus wasn't really rolling bad, he was just not rolling. Uh, no, I think it's just one of his weapons, yeah. weapon buttons yeah. that broke. Um. That looks now. right, and that looks 1d8 plus, yeah. Alright, so where was that? It was a 30, a 20, and a 23 to hit. No, wait. Yes. Yes, yes, because you did add your magic bonus to hit on your second and your third strike. So that's yes. correctly. So 30 hits him for wrong, just wrong damage. Let me fix his hit points. Um, just give me damage roll. Just a fresh damage roll. Without attack rolls. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, 15. I, that's not what Seven I was plus. expecting, but sure. Alright, uh, 15. Uh, and then your second strike is a 20, which does miss. And as you miss, he's gonna... Repost you and attempt to strike at you. Uh, that's a 19 to hit. You don't have shield. It's with disadvantage, though. Disadvantage. Yeah, with disadvantage, I know. I remember. Yeah, 19. Yeah, it misses. AC 20. The sword's out. Went back to the leather armor. Plus two. Plus yes. Um, and then a twenty-three also hits. Uh, not also, just hits. Yeah. So um. So yeah, make me another damage roll. But there is now one more. They are nice. where he struck you. Sixteen. All right. So that's three of your attacks. What else did you? Oh, did you? 
Oh, you also did Scimitar of Venom as a bonus action, I assume? Yes. Uh, which misses. And now that we have everything working, what do you do? Step away from those, see if it makes any difference. That sounds like a good idea. Alright. And that'll be it. Okay. And uh, one more con check for last attack. Mm. It didn't hit you though, right? It didn't hit him. Touch it. I didn't hit her. I didn't hit her. It was a 19. We figured out it doesn't hit him. Because I controlled for shit. I did not hit her. I did not. Yes, exactly. Okay, so that is the end of your turn. On his turn, he's gonna lift his sword kind of awkwardly, since it's pretty hard to do that with one hand, and shishes it. And takes a low stance and strikes swiftly as he brings the sword out of the sheath. And you all watch as the air fills with dimensional slashes, as a 20 foot cube around your Zardos fills with hazardous blade attacks. I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. You get a plus zero because I suck here. I'm guessing that fails. Yes, that fails. So, yeah, sure, I'll use uh, an indomitable and reroll. Go for it. Come on, dice. That's better. All right, 19. You have to use 19. Uh, you do manage to dodge most of that crap, which means you take only 14 points of damage. Nice. Um, but basically, um, what's that game that you need to close areas? Uh, to win the game. Uh, Otello? Yeah, I think that's what he's playing with him. And damn it. And basically this whole area remains like this. And let me see if I can accelerate the process. There's like an overkill somewhere there, but it's fine. We get the point. It's a 20 by 20. All right. Uh, oh, I did not quite word this right. This was his legendary action. So now he's gonna take his action. And with his first attack, he's gonna like hold his blade and move it as if he's struggling to move through the air as you see the air ripple and gather around the edge of his blade and he <laughs> whooshes it as a similar dimensional tear whips from his sword and strikes sideways in the direction of the fountain and uh, the chalice so he basically throws an attack and you see a pulsing there, over there, high above, and then he's gonna try to strike you a few more times at disadvantage. Oh, natural 18 and natural 19. Now, this I like. I'm not gonna say the final number because you can't shield this, and I don't want to tell you the modifier, but it hits. Um, so since this hits, uh, he doesn't hit that hard. Uh, yeah, that's a shitty roll. Uh, 11 points of slashing damage, and give me a moment. Um, and make me a wisdom saving throw, as he's gonna expand the superiority die.
Oh, wow. Uh, do you, you want to use a Domitable? Wait, that was. I already did. Oh, right. Uh, okay, so with the damage from his superiority dice, this is 16 points of slashing damage in total. So if that's what you made Constitution saving throw for, it holds, because that's a success. But take a bit more damage. Yeah. Um, and... Um, is that 16 in total? Uh, yes, 16 in total. Uh, pa -pa 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 -pa. And you're frightened of him. That was his first attack. Second attack. A miss. With a 16. And this was cocked. Uh, and third attack is still a miss. Uh, however, he's gonna go. I know how your magic works, brother. No way, I'm gonna stand here and trade blows with you. And you see him step into the terrain next to him, disappearing from sight, and then step out of the tear at the top of the stairs. As he points his sword at you and goes, It's over, brother. I have the high ground. <laughs> now it's your turn. <laughs> You're afraid of him. No right. First unless, unless you're for some reason immune to being frightened, but I don't think that's what it is. Don't think so. Don't think I have that as undead or anything. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about. So. Well, then you are afraid of him. <laughs> Alright, I will at least step out from this mess here. Yeah. yeah, I think I was thinking because some fright abilities say that they don't work on undead, but this ability doesn't work like that. Alright, and actually what do I have here? I will last. And I'll just say that's very impressive. I might be a little proud of you. Oh, by the way, um the big space will disappear at the end of his turn. Oh, okay. So, but there's still like the three slashes he made at you, which are here, I think. Yep. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Go ahead. Do your stuff. Okay. Yep. Say I'm a little proud of you there. You have grown a bit, but I have to. And for now, I will. Disappear. Alright, so you're no longer blurred, you are invisible. Uh... Alright, any skills you want to do? Yeah, well, I can't move closer to him, so I'll. Over here. Alright. Uh, a reminder, uh, invisible doesn't mean he doesn't know where you are, you are not hidden. Oh, right. Uh, so he knows where you are, he just cannot see. Alright. Is this the end of your turn? Yep. He like, tries to follow your footsteps and 
the trail you leave in the blood pool as you move around. Don't try it, brother. Your tricks won't work on me. And from the top of his position, uh, he is gonna send a couple dimensional slices at you. And disadvantage, obviously, because he can't see you. Uh, 16 misses. Uh, 17 misses. Natural 1. And the 15. Am I ever gonna roll like above a 10? Yeah, welcome to my world. You have a bonus of a billion! Yeah, and that's in the family. <laughs> Runs in the family, yeah. <laughs> Alright, um, in that case. I would call a three. Yeah. In that case, that's the end of his turn. Oh, did I get a save against. Uh, no, at the end of his turn, at the end of this, his turn, you're no longer afraid. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, it is your turn. Alright then. I should have done differently. Oh well. Ah, no, I. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I will move up. All right. And. And just for fun on the way while I'm moving, I will. Just for fun? Uh, just making sure this is set up properly. Stop scaring me. And here, oh, okay. Um, yes, yes, it would work like that. Oh, yes, you do hit him with a twenty two. That'll be it. Okay. Uh, in that case, on his turn, he or more like at the end of your turn, his legendary action is gonna step into the dimensional tear right next to him. Oh fuck! And exit. Over here, and then I will there for the rest of his movement. Turn around to where he hears and sees the splashing of your feet in the ground, and go. Don't do this, brother. Father has chosen you. You were meant to inherit our family, not to destroy it. And attempts to strike at you four times at disadvantage because he can't see you. Also because he's out of range. <laughs> oh, this was a natural 20! <laughs> but I still hit you with a 13. 13? 30. 3 0. Oh. Yes, the other roll was also pretty high. I finally rolled above 10. Uh, well, luckily for you, actually, wait. Uh, when you hit a creature with a weapon attack, yeah, I mean, this is a weapon attack. Uh, so make me a um, strength saving throw. As you take 26 points, oh, that was a good roll. 26 total points of damage from this strike as he aims for your legs. Oh, 19. And he fails to knock you prone. 
Uh, but he has... This was my first attack, right? Okay, sorry. Uh, one of the attacks, no, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting confused, yes. Okay, this one is a miss, second one is a miss, uh, third one is 20 to hit. Do you need to roll con checks for the concentration? Yes, he needs to. Yeah, roll concentration check for invisibility first. Alright, that was good. So, those rolls hold, and now 20 to hit. I hit you, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, 17 more points of slashing damage, and make me another concentration check. Uh, oh, that's a fail. For zone 17, DC is 13. Your invisibility fades. Ah. What? The... On a th d wasn't it 17 damage? Yes. Then isn't the DC... Oh, ten... right! Yes. Thank you. Thank you. You're still invisible. Why? How did I... How did I come up with that number? It happens. Okay. Alright. In that case, his last attack, also 20 to hit. Yeah. Still it's... Uh, 22 points of damage. So another con check. You see 11. This time I think I'm right. But you can't fail it, so don't bother. I did it already. Alright, uh, that's the end of his turn. It is your turn. Okay. I will... Running. Okay. Bonus action. Um. Yeah, sure. Bonus action. Hmm. Bonus action. Wrathful's might. <laughs> I mean, there's another ability you have that you might find it appropriate to use at this moment. Snare. I mean, I would like to heal. Okay. Power word kill? Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, wait. Yes, on his turn as, uh, as a legendary action, Barus takes out Voldemort's wand and goes, I'm a Kidabra! <laughs> Alright, uh, Barus is going to. Uh, there was a Parwall killed in the book, yes. But none of you, well, I mean, Zados cannot learn it because he will never have those spell slots. Well, never. Thank God. Never's a long time. Huh? Never's a long time, you know. I might get there. Much. Many years from now. Many years from now. Dan is 90 years old. You finally reach level 40 and gain your 9th level spell slot. I promise you guys, I will finish this campaign. If I remember <laughs> how. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Good. The sad part of the story was Dementia has hit Dan so hard he has forgotten. 
his players have left him 50 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Yet every Saturday he gathered around an empty table and spoke to himself. Uh, Come on, make a choice. Well, I wish I hadn't used the mention door. Yeah! <laughs> I agree with that! But you have used it! Yeah, that's the thing I didn't think about that. I was like, oh yeah, I shouldn't have done this. Fuck. I'm like, Mr. Step? Yeah. Would've been easier. No? But I'm here, so... You are? You might wonder how I ended up in this situation. I might have been overconfident and considered my baby brother a weakling. I assume that's an action search happening. Yes. Yes. Alright. Well, 34 hits. Uh, which means that's 17 points of piercing damage. And I'm listening. And go extra. That's it? Oh, okay. Uh, Alright, uh, please remember that now your weapon is a plus two weapon. Yes. That's how much? 29 points of damage. Yeah, after this blow, like, your previous blows that your brother have been glancing at best. And being a powerful man built as well, if not better than you, he shrugged them off. But this strike, you find the chip in his armor, and you feel thirst sap upon his blood. <sighs> oh, this is how far you've gone. Keep going. You have two more. We miss his, him with a 17, and you miss him with a 19. And on at least one of those, he's gonna use his reaction to repost your strike as he blows your blade aside and tries to cut you straight for the shoulder. Still a disadvantage because he sees some of you in all of the blood, but not all of you. And with double natural 4, that is a miss. Uh, and bonus action symmetry of Venom for 22, that is a hit for 7 more points of damage. Right, you both are looking pretty bloody. Uh, let me check. Uh, not yet. Alright. So, I assume it's the end of your turn? Yes. Okay. Uh, in that case, it is his turn, and he shall look up at you, like clutching, like clutch for the wound with one hand, and like Argh! because he can't hold it. He needs the hand to hold the sword and let the blood flow, and look up, looking for your eyes, and he doesn't find them, and yes, he speaks into the emptiness. Don't do that, Barras. You are my brother. I still love you! But yet, he understands the curse rise deep and strikes at you four more times at disadvantage. Another natural 20 does not end up being natural 20 and he misses. Actually, yeah, I forgot. Uh, so there's one tear already from his reaction. And this is the second one. Uh, on the miss, and then this second attack is a 20 quarter hit. Uh, yes, it's. it's All right. Eight, eight, eight. Make me a wisdom saving throw. Wisdom save? Isn't that a guarantee? Right. You are afraid once again and with a superiority die on which I once again roll a 12. This is a 33 points of damage total. 
which means I need you to make a concentration check DC 16 <laughs> when visibility. Right, you're good on that. How much damage was it again? 33. Third attack. Uh, 17 to hit. Misses. And fourth attack. Fourth attack also misses with a 15 to hit. Um, and right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. My turn is done. Go ahead. Do stuff. Uh, let's step out of that nonsense. It's not nonsense, it's a cool sword ability! Yeah, probably, but I don't like it. I'm gonna have to like it. I, I think I do, I have to like it if I, if I want to stay. I'll <laughs> step out. And... Work. Start. Oh dear, there it is. The ultimate equalizer. It is bright light now. It is red, but it is bright light. Okay, also, sure. you are invisible. Yeah. How many advantages do you want? He's also frightened. You're also frightened. Yes. Right. Straight roll then, right? So straight rolls, yes. Uh, he's not invisible anymore, both his concentration. Yeah. Yes, you're not invisible anymore. <laughs> Okay, yes. Why are we helping right. again? It takes four people to run this encounter. <laughs> now, please help me, because... Beca because yeah, yeah. you can't fair always fair keep fair everything fair. in mind yeah. as a DM. It's impossible. I mean, it's not yeah. my job to keep your concentration in mind. It's your job to keep your concentration in mind. Sorry, what? I wasn't concentrating. <laughs> yes, you aren't. Alright, in that case, these rolls are a disadvantage. Because you are frightened. 23 hits. Oh, uh, are you? Okay, sure, that's 8 points of damage with Thirst. Is that wrong click? No, magic. Oh, wait, it's a plus 2. Uh, okay. Uh, 14 misses. Oh, yeah, the crit. And 21 hits. Okay, so on the 14, on the 14, something happens. Um, no, doesn't. I'm stupid, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Nothing happens on the 14. Well, something happens on the 14, he strikes you with his repost once again. Uh, yes, he does, because he got his reaction back. So that's a straight roll, because Frightened doesn't give him anything, if I remember correctly. Well, that's a 14 to hit. So that's a miss, which means you hit him with a 21 uh, for... Uh, Three points of damage. Uh, Minus twenty-three and the sixteen misses. Any skills you want to do? Or can do? No, that's everything. All right. He just. Looks at you. Take another step away from whatever slashes would have appeared in here. Oh, right, there would have been a slash from his um, reposter. He just finally finds your eyes, looks into them.
defense continues his assault. Mm. All right. Uh, straight rolls, which means I can roll all four at the same time. Okay, uh, this is twenty-five to hit. It's then twenty to hit. It's uh, fifteen to hit, which misses, and the twenty-eight to hit. Yep, it's. Well, there are some good news for you, if you've been counting. Oh wow, that's a big roll on my first strike. Twenty-seven points of slashing damage. Smart. Very necessary. All right. Um, so you have 150 temporary hit points right now. I don't think I can, but let's see if I slash through that. There's 27 points of damage to 150. Um, start, like, can I count it somewhere? I can. I'm counting. All right. In that case, second strike hits the coffin for 23 points of damage. And the third attack hits the coffin for 25 points of damage. <laughs> and leaves... for... tears. Now, you cannot get out of them. Because you're in a coffin. Um... Also, yeah, it was his turn. It is his turn right now, yes. Yes, it is his turn. Baros is, I mean. And it shouldn't happen at the start of his turn, but I forgot about it at the start of his turn because I was role playing. And those of you on the galleries uh, see as slowly, but his wounds begin to stop bleeding. It is nowhere close to what you see in Kairos do, but his wounds are slowly recovering. Um, okay, that is the end of his turn, which means it's your turn, which you spent being restrained uh, in your shit. Does he take damage from the slashes at the beginning? Uh, yes, he does. Uh, except not at the beginning, at the end of his turn. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Unless they do some damage. Wait, wait, moment, wait, moment. Um. Um. Uh, switch take as much on some roll. Ah, uh, incapacitate. Uh, almost away at the end of your... I'm thinking, like, both things happen at the end of your turn. The coffin crumbles and the slash hit. hit. I'm trying to figure out what happens first. <laughs> uh, roll me d20. On uh, 11 or higher, uh, slashes first. On below 11, coffin first. I think this is the most fair way I can do this. All right, motherfucker. Coffin uh, crumbles. Okay. Always roll them. Sorry. And you take the slashes. Oh god. There are four of them. I think you're down. Maybe. Thirty-six points of slashing damage. I do need you to make a concentration check for the shadow blade. How much was it? Thirty-six. Eighteen. It's eighteen. Now, how much damage? Like in thirty-six. 36. But it's his turn. It is his turn. <laughs> yeah. Um, Zardos is first, right? Baros is... Like, where in... 
Well, would someone else have us come in initiative here? Also, Shadowblade is gone. Oh uh, so, Zardas... Is it gone? DC 18. DC 18? Yes, 30, DC 18. 36, yeah. Yes, alright. Shadowblade is gone. Um... I mean, you guys want to interfere at this point? I mean, I'm dead last. I wouldn't get to choose. Well, I'm right before you. I mean, okay, like... So I far, the undead are on looking, so I'm gonna miss them because everything seems like... Actually, wait, no. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong side of the initiative. At the end of Zardas' turn, it is Barus' turn. Yeah, no choice. I miss switch them. Yeah, that's what... We were saying. Um, which means... Oh, oh. That's... Oh. Seeing, and as his wounds continue to heal, by the way, seeing you... Um, I don't think I can heal that much. Uh, okay. Think you stumble out of your coffin, blooded, on your knees. Barros leaves his sword and says. I was never meant to rule this family. My father said I was too honorable for that. That is why I will give you the chance you would not have given me. Throw down your sword. Leave. And never come back. What is your turn, Zardas? Unless somebody wants to interfere after this. No. In that case, Zardas, it is your turn. How about we go and wrathful smite him, take his sword, take Zardas, take Zardas' sword, and get the fuck out? <laughs> no. The only thing I can do is just. For the record, if you're still standing in slashes, you might want to move away. Or crawl yes. away. Step to the side. And like, he has sword raised. He is ready to attack you based on your action. Yep. He is being merciful, but not stupid. Well, yeah. I mean, he is being yeah. stupid. He should kill you, but... Should. <laughs> Ooh, what yeah. if they kill each other at the same time? Because he's holding his action, so like, attacks and attack. Now I'll just look at him. So yes, honorable as always, brother. And? I will... I'm not attacking him, at least. I'll use my action to heal. Oh, wait, is what? What's left of thirst. Which is... Hmm... That much. Okay, sure. So how much does it heal you? So we have 10 left right now. Where no, it's... 15 if... Because... Blood how much... Like you had 30 to start, right? Yeah. Blood Coffin is 5, right? Yes. And you, you used uh, Touch of Death once, which is like 7? I think. Five. Didn't I nerf it? Cost more? No, I don't remember that. I definitely remember nerfing it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, see? Expand seven stacks of essence to deal necrotic damage. Okay, I didn't update it here. 
So that was 5 and 7 you expanded, so you have... How much is that? 25 minus 7, 18 stacks of essence remaining. Which means that technically your weapon wasn't even plus 2 during your last attacks. Actually, well, after Blood Coffin, no, yeah, no, it's right. It's Right now your weapon is a plus 1. Well, it's plus 0 because you expand that, so you heal 18. And uh, then you would be healing 18 divided by 4, which is 4? Mm. 4 and a half, but it's rounded down, I think. Yeah. All right, <clears throat> you heal. And... And? And bonus action. Bonus action? I will uh, second wind. Okay, all right, sure, sure. All right. And yes, brother, it's, but as I said, this madness has to end. In which case, he will trigger his held action and use his reaction to attack. But only once, because you can hold only one attack. Mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty sure we didn't mark fear on you, but it's long gun anyway, so it should be a straight roll. Um, 16 to hit, misses. And then it is his turn, his proper turn. Uh, and there's now one slash on you. He will go full round of attacks on you. I'm gonna do like this. I like some of these numbers, I don't like some other numbers, but what can I say? 19 to hit misses, uh, 23 to hit. Um, shield. Uh, what's your AC? 25, right? Yes. In that case, 20 misses, and then I have a 27, which hits. Uh, 21 point of damage. And four more slashes. still up? Yep. Okay. And we're back. It is... Uh, maybe this might be where someone might want to intervene, I don't know. Because Sardis did not surrender and he looks really rough. But so does Barus. Does she? He said Barus looks also rough. He stopped bleeding. Yes, make a choice. Uh... Oh, more like, let me do this. Milora, would you like to interfere? Oh, she's not here. She's not here. Well, her loss. Leos, would you like to interfere? Yes. What do you do? Um, with my bonus action, I cast Sanctuary on... Um, on Zardos. And I say, well, we played enough here. Let's finish this. Uh, and I am going to cast... Um... Never get my honorable duel duels. Yeah. This has um, nothing to do with honor. Castell had one. I got half a duel. We'll cast uh, 
Look, if somebody is attacking you with a sword and you're trying to not kill them, you're still trying to disarm them. I will cast... Uh, well, this healing, we know that the healing doesn't work on Zardos. Correct. It might suddenly start working, you never know. <laughs> it is I'm gonna banished. attempt to cast Banishment on, um, on Barros. Uh, what's the range on that? Um, the range is 60 feet. Uh, two. Uh, mm, one second. Here's the spell. Charisma save. Hmm. All right. What's the spell the same as Kirin? Uh, as Kirin, it is uh, seventeen. Can you tell me his natural rule? Nope. I mean, yeah. I can, I don't want to. Yeah, but you might have to. <laughs> because that's uh, what the luck does. Uh, charisma, right? Charisma. I'm trying to find something like that. Hope he's not proficient. One second. I have to check something to make sure I don't make anything bad. Yeah, okay, yeah. Six. Your DC is 17? Yeah. Ah, if he's proficient, this is dangerous. This might just meet if he's proficient. I will use Bend Luck. All right, go for it. All right. Natural four now. This being a saving throw, he fails. Barros chooses to use Indomitable to reroll a failing throw. He has to use the other roll. Interesting. He is banished. I will say destroy everything. It is integrated John Leos. Um yeah, I'm gonna stay exactly where I, where I am. Alright. Let's take another 30 second break because it is gonna I'm ramp here. up <laughs> very quickly. Yeah.
And I might have forgotten to do something. Oh well, nothing fun happened. Oh, uh, that wasn't a spell, right? Uh, no. Okay. Would my no. uh, magic aura no. only affect me as well? Uh, yes, it affects only you. Only me, and yeah. Okay, it doesn't still... help here. So you take full 29 points of damage from that. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, quick recap. Okay, um, we are going to do. We're bringing out the big guns, right off the bat. Disintegrate. No, oh. no, Phoenix. The Phoenix is coming out. I need to quickly check my ranges. This is gonna be fun. They are all in range. Yeah, you're gonna be making ten saves. Um, as I, I no. can click this spell. I'm thinking about something different. Ah, yeah, I was hoping. Okay, 42 is a not so good roll, I think. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, a little below. Whatever. Um, I would like for Varos and his four necromancers. That's five people. And then whoever is around Sardos, I think. Yeah. We'll take like um, his personal bodyguards, the one next to me. All right, <coughs> let's go far, easier on this, okay? Yeah. Because this is complicated. Let's start with Baros. Yeah. What's your DC? 20, int. Alright. And what happens on a fail? Stunned. 42 damage and stunned. Alright. Four necromancers. Yep. They should fare a little bit better. Yeah, they should. But not against the seam. This it means I need one. to roll a 13 or higher. Well, would you know? Uh, up as much damage. 21. That's gonna be 5. Alright. They all saved? Damn. Uh, uh, no, one didn't. didn't. And then um, you can roll for five bodyguards, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, this one here first. Then the two next to uh, Let me target. roll and because I need to look at other shit. Can they make it? I don't know. Uh, they no, they can't. <laughs> okay, then well, we'll, I'll just pick five people in that case. The guy next to me, the two next to Zardos. Uh, don't wait any time. Yeah. I mean, they're gonna be perma stunned since they can't make the save. They're basically oh, out sure. of combat anyway. Uh, yeah. Maybe some of them are dead. Really yeah. dead. And then Three? this one here and this one here. Four. Five. Yeah. And they also each take 42. And yeah, yes, they're out of the I have calculated the damage. Get okay. Um, and since the dude next to me is stunned, can he still hold on to me? Uh, yes. Yes? Yes. I mean, Cut stun the... doesn't say anything about breaking grapple, so yes. Fair enough. I think um, it might be easier to get my. Easier to get out since he's locked in place. Uh, uh, not, not like he's. I mean, he doesn't bother me, right? Uh, it's, a carpet, it's a carpet that moves. It's not me, so I don't mm. mind. The carpet will just bury both of us. <laughs> um, I would me... say, make me a strength saving throw. Because right now you have a, about two hundred pounds of knight hanging off of you as dead weight, and as you've said, he's not on the carpet. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't I have to have made that before? But... Yes, you should have. Mm. But I am a generous god. Uh, right. Oh, no. 
<laughs> I mean, it doesn't get much better, but... Oh, it does get much does. better, All right, actually. that's good enough. You feel like your armor's gonna get dislocated any moment, because that's a lot of weight, okay. but you hold on. Um, so where would you I like the two of you to move? <laughs> um, I don't want us to move in the moment, I'm just... Uh, it was more of a... I mean, using Khan dead as shackles is fine for me. And I would like to... Hmm, do I want to? Why not? I will quicken a, a firebolt at the dude that's hanging on to me, so I'll get rid of him sometime after all the damage Go he's ahead. taken. Disadvantage? Oh, straight roll. Uh, uh, straight yeah. roll, 30. He takes 13 points of fire damage. Okay. And it's I get him. Fine. And that's the end of my turn. Okay. At the end of your turn... Necromancer number 4 is gonna stand up and run behind cover and cast a spell yeah, and I see come him. back I with I it. I can't see him, right? So. Yeah. And then he comes back with it, and he casts that spell, and he's gonna cast it at you, because you're like really nice in a mm -hmm. line of mm -hmm. sight, plus you just did something really bad. The spell is called, I mean, you know the spell, Gaze of Nivek. Polymorph. And no. he's gonna upcast it at level... Six. Okay, which means five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, race, I believe. <laughs> I don't remember the spell, to yes, be honest. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, 11 rays. Okay. Um, well, let me oh. check his two hits. Okay. I think it's not like Scorching Ray. Yes. It's somewhat different. Alright. Uh, 11. The hit. Well, no, my, uh, I'm probably gonna end up using shield at some point here. Then right? like, you use it. And so, my, so my AC, no, not, I don't need to use it against eleven. Okay. I have, these, I have AC fourteen. Okay. But uh, seventeen to, to hit. Yeah. Well, let's. This is when I shield. All right. Uh, so I, he needs, needs to need my natural uh, twenty. Mm -hmm. Uh No, I don't. Twenty to hit. Yeah. Two hits. That was five. Uh, miss. Uh, Twenty-five to hit. Mm -hmm. uh, Twenty-one to hit. Mm -hmm. Four. Ten and one more. And another twenty-five to hit. So five. Four. One of those at twenty. Five. One of them at twenty. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, you're not we concentrating on anything, right? Hmm? You're not concentrating on anything, right? No. Okay. Uh... Okay, you take uh, three necrotic, uh, four necrotic, three necrotic, five necrotic. Fifteen. Yes. And on the crit, you take six more. For 21. Mm -hmm. He gains 10 hit points back. Alright. Uh, that was him. Now starts the fun part. All the undead on the left side. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Uh... 
Okay. Alright, those can reach Melora but can't do anything. The rest of them Poor souls. are gonna move down. One, two, three, four, five, six. And all as one. I put down their swords. Nice. I'm getting fucking plucked. And get out crossbows. Yeah. And shoot at you. Yep. You still have shield up, right? So yep. your AC is 19. Yep. I'm just gonna calculate the number I need to hit. Uh, 19 minus minus zero to hit is this number. Okay. Uh, two misses. Two misses. One hit. Two misses. Two misses. One hit. Two misses. To misses, to misses, and one hit. Three hits. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, your AC with shield is pretty high. Yeah, it's pretty decent. Okay, so first hit is six points of damage, second is seven, and the last one is ten. Twenty-three. All right. Uh, okay, I'm done with this uh, initiative. Zardus, it is your turn. Please make me the saving throw. This is success. But you're still unconscious. Which means that your turn ends, and at the end of your turn, you are killed by the oh, Sanchez. Right. They're separate instances? Yes. Oh, what happened? He's dead. How? <laughs> all of the slashes. slashes. They're all separate strikes. Oh. Which puts us at Barus's turn. Tell, please, he's stunned. Please tell me the save he's that stunned, he's... Yes. No, I don't have a reaction. Don't tell me he's safe. So he gets to make it at the end of his turn, right? Basically. Yeah, he can repeat his end saving throw. DC 20. Good luck. Net 20. Motherfucker. I'm like, he needs to roll this high to succeed. This is never happening. Not 20. Motherfucker, no! Which means he is no longer stunned. Yeah, his turn is done, but he's But he's prone. And because he's no longer stunned. Something else happens. Well, technically it should have happened a bit earlier. You watch as the blood that has pulled around him starts gathering and forms into a massive flailing arm in place of his missing arm. But he doesn't do anything with it yet because it's not his turn. Well, it is his turn, but it's all. Alright, uh, that is the end of his turn. And the fun continues, because now it's turn for Necromancer number one, who I believe is stunned, which means he gets to repeat a saving throw. Uh, and with his bonus, he succeeds. All right, that's Necromancer number one. And now, Actually, yeah, one moment before that happens. Uh, yeah. Do I want to? Should I want to? Well, the slashes are gone, right? No. 
I mean, um, apologies. This one is gone. Um, come, 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 come. Come, 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 come. Should do this. Is it a smart move to make in circumstances? Yes, I believe it's a smart move to make. In that case, at the end of Necromancer's turn, Barros is gonna use his legendary action to shift himself over there. I'm all I call it. Oh, I thought I misread that. Yes. Um, now Melora is Melora's turn. Genius. Um. I'm out of tea. We need to end the session. <laughs> I'm out of both teas. <laughs> I'm gonna cast Firestorm level 8. Alright, I assume you have all the calculations for the placement of your circles made already? I hope I do. I hope I have this right. Um, go for it. All right, it's um. What's well, gonna be? The, wait, there's one. Cause that's ten by ten, right? Uh, yes. If you hold shift, it is going to snap to grid. It's fine. Do do this for the next ones. All right. Two. Three. Four. Five, six, seven. Oh god, there's no way I can get anyone else without getting Trigo in it. Yeah, yeah, the Ardos is dead already. I'll be fine. You could potentially maybe hit the, the ones on the rank here? She needs to connect the... She needs to go up. Yeah, he Zardus mm. dead. I'll make it. Just do it. <laughs> yeah, just burn his corpse. It'll be fine. I've built Trigo around resisting fire damage, so. <laughs> Can I do this Eight. one? Okay. Uh. That should be ten. Mm-hmm. Okay, go. Um, I'm I'm counting eleven. Am I if it's a little teeny one, one, then no, that's not that's not yeah, one. I'm, I'm no, this is a small one. Yeah, it's fine. Oh, I I might have uh, double counted that one. All right, I'm just gonna roll a lot of dice. Uh, I need to roll this much. The stun people out of fail. Do they? Yeah, I think stun, stun this dex uh, auto fail. I'll check. Okay, yes. Um, yes, auto fail strength and dex. This one is dead. Would prone be disadvantage? No. Okay. I think I don't remember. No, no. Uh, it's only disadvantage on attack rolls. This one is already dead. And this too. This one is burned up. This one succeeds. And one more. Okay. Oh, this is convenient. It's a kind of. Uh, oh, so I was wrong. It doesn't let me up cast it. So it's going to be level seven. It's going to be my first one. The damage. God damn fucking thing. The um, the damage doesn't change regardless of the spell mm -hmm. um slot I use. Mm.
I think I'm done. I yep. can confirm that you are done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, uh, Melora, that's your turn. Yep, and I don't think I can move anywhere without getting upper attacks, so I'm good. <gasps> yeah, that's going to be a lot of attacks you get. Uh, all right, uh, please uh, start working on deleting those squares so that we don't clutter the map, because this shit is in, in, gotcha. in, 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 <laughs> instantaneous. Uh, all right, uh, what fun things should we do? What fun things should we do? Uh, Surrender. Necromancer number two is going to run around casting some spells while he's hidden behind cover. And he is gonna release a spell. Let's see. Uh, level five. Uh, that's not of target. Half found it up. Let's see. Hansen. Two, okay. Two, two, two. So I have two, four, six, eight. Yes, eight. And if it does, all uh, right, eight, eight. Do I have that much? One, two, three. Yes. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, uh, seven. And one of those, I guess. Alright, so as he cast Dance of Death. The dark magic of his spell hits the undead on the battlefield, taking direct control of them and prompting them to move. Eight of the undead immediately use a reaction to make attacks against their nearby targets. One of them is against Leos, but the guy is prone, so he does it at disadvantage, uh, which means his attack misses. Um, two of them are against Trigon, uh, straight rolls. Uh, one misses, the other one is, um, is a 20 to hit, which also misses. And then we got some attacks against Melora. Let's start for attacks from the whites. Uh, 22 to hit, 25 to hit, 14 to hit, and 7 to hit. I assume two of those are hits. Yeah, just two. So this one and this one, which means a long sword for uh, five points of damage and a great sword for seven points of damage. You're not concentrating on anything. And then the vampire spawn is, uh, almost like the vampire knight, is gonna strike at you as well uh, with a 24 to hit. He hits and and he shall he shall grapple you you are now right. grappled okay uh, now it's Leo's turn I think Yes. Okay. Um, question. Yes. Um, the Kirin has hover speed. Is it physically possible for me to hover over into this direction? No. There's not I enough space. You can barely walk. Mm, okay. Um, well, I'm going to cast uh one, one second um, <laughs> um, um, 
Uh, by the way, Trigger, I believe Shadow Face was on Zardos, so if you want to drop Concentration, you can do it. Because it's pointless. It is. Yeah. I mean, if he gets up, it's not going to be an effect, right? Uh, he is dead. He is not getting up. I am going to cast uh, actually, Banish... I'm not sure he might. Yes, sorry, go ahead. Oh, oh sorry, that was... Uh, I forgot that I have a touch screen, and I just pointed my finger at things. I'm going to cast Banishment on level... Man, fuck, fuck I, I forgot my uh, counter. Um, I'm going to cast it on level 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. Um, what does it do? I'm going to target uh, this Necromancer, this Necromancer, this one, and Barris. Um, so three necros and barrels, two, four, and three, and barrels. Arranged another plane in existence. All right. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Alright, let's start with Baros, I guess. That sounds like an idea. I just put the C17, right? Yes. Oh uh, boy. Dice. Dice are failing me. Ah, uh, bum 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 bum. He succeeds. And then three necromancers, right? Mm -hmm. Uh Nick just have this much. I have no idea which dice are old. Uh, success, failure and success. Oh, so success, failure, number four is banished. Okay. And with my bonus action I'm gonna cast Sanctuary on myself and that's it. Okay, okay. Uh, bum, 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 At the end, yes. Put, put concentration on yourself. Yes, please. Sorry. Okay, now, never mind. Uh, all right. Well, here funs. Here starts. <laughs> here continues the fun part. Oh dear. Okay. Uh, guy unprompts himself. It's what? And twenty. Hmm. Right. The one that is grappling you, Milora, is gonna attempt to bite you. However, 15 to hit? Yeah, it just hits. Alright. You take uh, 5 points of piercing damage. And you take uh, 7 points necrotic damage, and your hit point maximum is reduced to 7. By 7, not to 7. Jeez, that would have been OP. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that would have been extreme. You would yeah. want to roll very low yeah. that day, so I only rolled the one, so you're at max one. Those funny boys <laughs> remain stunned. Um, these funny boys will... Engage Drago, I guess. It seems like a target. Okay. I mean, he seems like a bad target, but he's a target nonetheless. 
Alright, uh, one of them uh, attacks is actually 24 to hit, which I believe hits. Yeah, that hits. Uh, uh, I can maybe use reaction to negate that, actually. Wait. Uh, so you use re reaction to negate my fun, yes. Yeah, parry. I did not hit him! I did not hit him! Yeah, I'll right. parry it. Sure, you parry that shit. There's a second guy uh, misses twice. Oh, this guy's a stunt. This guy's handing off Arles. Um, uh, these guys are gonna unprone themselves and having a near 15 feet of movement left, they shall. They shall. They shall... shall... go join the party around Leos. Um, ah, this one is gonna... No, oh, this one is gonna do something interesting. He's gonna stand over here. Yes, and pretend to be bodyguard. Alright, continuing the fun on my side. Uh, la, 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 la. The whites on the right unprone themselves. Oh god. All together. All together now. I maybe should not be doing this, but whatever. Okay, uh Can you walk there? Isn't that the wall? No. Okay. Get in line, motherfucker! And okay, these guys are gonna stand on the stairs and just wait. Are they gonna go? Oh, these three guys! They're gonna reorient themselves! And attempt! Attempt! To shoot at Leos. I don't think they're gonna succeed, but they're gonna try. With some saving throw for a I heard it! Uh, one of them actually succeeds and shoots you. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, Please don't hit. Please don't hit. Please don't crit. Uh, the no wait, I forgot to roll uh, to hit. Because you should roll to hit first before you roll damage. Well, this is fun. Uh, one of them is a 16 to hit, which is a miss. The other one is natural 20 to hit. God damn it, how many more? <laughs> Look, when I roll like 20 guys, I'm gonna roll at least one natural 20. Uh, 10, 12 points of piercing damage. Here comes the con save. Hey! Oh, right. Praise. Uh, and where okay. was that when I needed it? <laughs> yep. Okay, uh, you think your, uh, your testament is over? No. Every single other white that is next to you attempts to do the same. Okay, your wisdom DC is 17, 17, so I need to roll this much or higher, so two of the four succeed. Oh, it was no. number two and number four, these are long swordsmen. So the first of them attacks with again a 16 and again a natural 20. God fuck. Uh, uh, 14 points oh, of damage. Okay. Sorry, that was 14? 14 points of damage, yes. Oh, come on, come on, save. Come on. Okay, and the other guy misses twice. And there are two more on you who attempt to make wisdom saving throw. One uh, fails, one succeeds, attempts to attack you twice. Misses both times and doesn't feel anything about it because he's undead. Uh, 
<laughs> okay, these were guys on the right side of the map. Which technically includes all these guys. Alright. Laura. Hi. You need a macro, Your AC is a 15, I need to hit this much. A one hit. Two misses. One hit. One hit. Two hits. Uh, ten points of damage. Eleven points of damage. Six points of damage. Seven points of damage. Nine points of damage. And two attacks, not two attacks, four attacks of triangle. Uh, I think I'm going to 20 to hit him. Yeah, uh, everybody misses. Alright, and last but not least, Necromuncer number 3. Motherfucker. Yes. Um, this is fun. I think there's more fun. Um, he's going to hide. Range is that much. And cast a spell. I mean, that was know. 5... 10... 20... Walk out of here. Um... Sanctuary, a half a spell. Succeeds on his wisdom throw against targeting uh, Leos. I need everybody who's alive, which is well, everybody, to make a um, constitution saving throw. Aris? Yeah, let me think. No, I think it's too risky. It's nice. Yeah. Alright, so we have 22, 19, 13, and 27. Melora goes blind. Trigger, it's your turn. It was number three who cast that? Yes. I will... cast Misty Step over here. Oh, yes! Uh, where is it? Oh boy, <laughs> poor soul right there. <laughs> Wait, how do you do it with Q? Okay, so that, and then I'll move up to here. Good, can do it. And bonus action is gone because I used Misty Step. Oh, come so, on, nice. Is he prone? Oh, yes. Yes, he is prone. Oh, okay, yes. so I didn't need to shield slam it. Okay, so advantage just smacking. Come on, Dice. Come on. Crit. Crit. No. Um, I will smite that with a fourth level spell slot. Oh, Oof. yes. Oof. Which is this button over here. Okay. Oh. Nice roll. Oh, yes, yes. If it hits, does it hit? 32? 32 does hit, yes. How do you ask? 
Okay, and uh, next attack. Crit. Not a crit. Uh, which I will also smite. With a... Yeah, fourth level spell slot. Oh my man. How do I do this? Um... I mean, I kind of misty stepped, run like right in front of him. Honorable duel, du but I wouldn't sacrifice honor to save this world. And then, like that was the worst one liner I have ever. It's heard. not a one liner. It's it's true. I've wanted to say this since Zardus and him started talking about honor and shit and whatnot. And then, uh, like slices, I don't know, like throat or something, make it like gory. <laughs> All right. As you approach, the only man in this room who had any honor, the only man who fought honestly, and for a reason he believed to be right, you see only pain and tears in his eyes. As nothing but gurgles leave his split throat. And his flesh attempts to regenerate. But it does not under the searing light of your spear. Dropping from his hand is a fully assembled, blood soaked, and not belonging to Zardos. Thirst. Oh, well, not thirst anymore. But a blade. Can, uh, I used bonus action action, yeah, so I can't pick it up, right? Uh, you have a free object interaction that you can use to pick up a weapon that is not being held by anybody. Kinda... I'll just stand over it. Anyone who comes close and tries to pick it up is gonna fucking die. Yeah, so uh, that's my that's my turn. Very nice turn, I must say. Yeah, I'm also sorry. I didn't want to kill him, actually. Like, in private chat, I was writing, like, let's try and convince him to join our side. That way you don't kill a sibling and we get his powers. I mean, that was what he was saying. In the beginning. That's my turn now. No! No? This is where we're gonna end the session for tonight. Oh, that, because that if we don't, good. it's gonna take a while, I need to think about this. Yes, well, very nice. The only person who won today was Xenobia. For as she wished, the Melozan family has been destroyed. And nobody holds the cursed blade. Oh, shit. Whether this is the end, or there will be some tricks made and deals struck, we'll find out next week. We Dan kills his players. We still have nine turns to...